Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to The Right Opinion, the home of a twat with too much free time. And honestly, weight is not something that I have touched on that often, despite it being a pretty common topic in discussion all over the internet. Because, in case it hasn't been apparent, the whole concern surrounding obesity has been one of the problems arising over the last few decades. With the shift in culture made by many people, it appears that access to consumption and sedentary lifestyle has created what many view as an epidemic, particularly in countries like the US, where obesity has ballooned. There are many reasons for why this this is considered to have happened and there are many hypotheses but at the end of the day what we can confirm is that obesity exists and with the existence of fat people comes the existence of fat youtubers obese overweight youtubers are nothing particularly new you're dealing with a platform that is based online many people on the platform aren't the most active and some people might even find appeal within their great weight However, from this transpired a new genre. This mainly revolved around weight loss. The reason should be fairly obvious. We as viewers typically look for some element of ourselves in the creator, whether that's something we currently have or whether that's something we aspire to be. Now, when you have a weight loss YouTuber, this is someone that we should follow their journey with. We find inspiration in their progress. Maybe you're an overweight person yourself, but at the same time, you're an introvert or an agoraphobe and you don't want to show your body at a Weight Watchers meeting. Maybe those people online can give some advice on how to lose weight from the realms of the screen. Although it may not be sufficient to make you lose weight on its own, they may provide that inspiration, may provide you with that extra motivation, and then you can maybe document your journey online too, and inspire other people to come along with you. The problem is that this vision doesn't always happen, and sometimes people themselves aren't strong enough to create that art through their own volition, and thus the story changes very significantly. And because they're documenting all of it on YouTube, suddenly this augments into something much uglier and we can see a bigger, scarier picture. This is where we've reached today's creator, the creator known as Amblin Reed. It was a late evening and I had worked on a video only to make the decision that actually, although I wasn't a fan of the creator's content, there wasn't enough to follow through on it. So I decided to watch a few videos. I knew one of my fellow creators known as Danaki had released a couple of uploads on these YouTubers who were rather notorious of the handling of their weight on the platform. And so in my crisis, I decided to sit down and watch them. And although he was a tad too insulting for my rather polite demeanor, he touched on some very important points that I definitely feel could be expanded on in a right opinion video. His content definitely does a great job at individually calling out the YouTubers in question, but what is there beneath the surface? Well, let's talk about the YouTuber of the day. This is Amblin Reed. She is a 28-year-old YouTuber from the United States of America. She recently became a target for a lot of YouTubers for a multitude of reasons. Typically, the cycle consists of her doing something, people reacting, people noting her rather counterproductive efforts to lose weight, people noting various other negative traits such as her apparent compulsion to lie and deceive her audience and alleged manipulation of certain situations. Hell, there is a whole channel dedicated to exposing Amblin. That is some spicy commitment, considering that many of these videos receive more views than Amber's videos themselves. Amblin appears to be a dubious character for more reasons than just her weight, and although I do consider many of them valid criticisms and would definitely implore people to look into them, that will typically be a secondary narrative of this video, because although I will definitely touch on that, there's a lot of detail to these stories that I think you can only really see from the testimonies, and I don't plan on addressing all of those. Though if you are interested, I'll definitely reference and link some of the more controversial incidents sooner or later on the video, because there is a lot to cover. One term that I saw thrown around a lot was the word LOL cow. This is a strange word and one that I have only encountered rather recently, but rather often relating to this specific case. I thought it might be a derogatory term relating to her size, but in fact, it's a catch-all phrase that explains an individual whose behavior is being mocked and yet is completely oblivious to it, and they continue to behave in this way. But I'm not sure that's completely the case. In the past few months, Amblin's channel has grown significantly, and this has essentially snowballed, which has brought her the attention of many commentators who have decided to call her out. And yet, in spite of this, she has persisted, paying little attention or just doing the classic YouTuber blocking out the haters technique. However, none of these antics are particularly new and anyone who's been along for the ride will be aware of that. However, how long has it really been going on for? Today's video will discuss the rise of Amblin Reed and why her appeal is rather different than many others and explain what this means for both her and many of her peers. That from what I've seen a lot of the videos so far is that they do a great job in presenting these various incidents that in a way don't seem too connected, but I'd argue there is a connection that we can put together. 
So join me, The Right Opinion, as we take a dive into the very twisted reality of Amblin Reed. Let's go. Amblin Reed opened her channel on YouTube on the 17th of September 2011. However, she didn't start posting until two years later, 17th of November 2013. This first video was an interesting one because it showed Amblin without a cause exactly. I think making these YouTube videos that might make me accountable. Um, <clears throat> I just think it would really help me. Um, I watch so many people who make videos and they're so inspirational. Maybe I can be an inspiration for somebody. I don't know. I just, I'm not really doing this for other people. I'm more so doing it for myself. But if I can help somebody along the way, then that's even better. When we open our YouTube channels, it's fairly typical that we don't know how to provide an introduction, and yet in this video, in many ways, you could see how things might take shape in a positive direction. Weight loss creators, in many ways, are very polished, well-produced individuals with a clear plan, and it sells in a way. You throw in some inspirational music, a riling speech, and you might end up with a Fousey-esque sort of video, which even though isn't my cup of tea, it is a lot of people's, especially the internet casuals. To understand where I'm at, you have to understand where I started from. A couple of years ago, I was in the best shape of my life, mentally, physically, and spiritually. Never mind, we've already got that. The thing is that in spite of all this, I can see the appeal of the more insecure individual, putting their story up on websites for the world to see. And I think that it's important that people like that are represented. That's the most real you're going to get. And that's the thing. What you see right here is a different person. The whole mentality, how she thinks of herself. There is no real agenda here, no real plot right now. It's just a person documenting their life. That is classic YouTube. In fact, although I wouldn't necessarily say that her videos are exactly the epitome of a vlog she brands herself as a vlogging channel and they're characterized by that sort of journey but never having too much of a purpose just having a little arc inside the video and this is the thing although it's very niche and not exactly something that masses of audiences are gonna see in youtube trending because it isn't done up all nicely i can see how this content would be important for some people and judging by a couple of the comments it clearly was one of the biggest problems is that people often feel like they're alone in their experiences and therefore it's important that people who do have the courage to speak about them you know maybe should although of course it's their own discretion and although amblin's channel was inherently bleak in its tone when you talk about your quote past it comes with the implication that it's in the past and there is this notion of being able to move forward now i'm going to discuss why eventually amblin's decision of her channel direction would soon show these videos in a problematic light but honestly videos like an emotional look into my past back then without the turn in her content would have been powerful videos for some people at the time so this video is going to be about my childhood and what led me up to where i am now and i hope you stick around to watch it while she was doing this, she'd do like this weekly weigh-in where she would keep her subscribers up to date with exactly how her weight was heading. Now, it seems that typically when she started a channel, it fluctuated around the 360s, pounds that is, which for any of you metric lads is around 160 kilograms. Sometimes these weigh-ins went well, other times they didn't. But the only person I can really blame it on is me. I put the food on the fork and put it in my mouth. It's that simple. It is that simple completely. And with her earlier channel days, her response seemed genuine. And it seemed genuine in a way that it didn't have to gain anything from its audience. There wasn't any overwhelming success. And when she did put on weight, she held her hands up and said that she could do better. She talked about the time when she'd lose weight, 89 pounds to be exact, to give that hope and motivation. I was on a weight loss journey before and I lost 89 pounds. My starting weight was 420. Blah, 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 blah. I feel like I really hold that story to my heart. The fact that I was down 89 pounds at one point in my life is very is a very big accomplishment. None of it seemed like the content that people are observing today. It seems completely different. Her diet was very back and forth, but a lot of the time, the food she did present was all right. If we can date the start of the channel at around 2013, by April 2014, her weight was pretty similar. Yesterday, I was 358.0, and today I was 356.4, so that means I'm down 1.6. That means my total loss is 64.2, 
and to get to 299.8 is 56.6 more pounds to go. I make this observation, I say it's important because I think it's necessary to understand the context and present to you the dilemma. It seems apparent to me that unless she is one of the most calculated creators in the history of YouTube, she didn't start the channel with the intent of amassing the weight she has now. In fact, honestly, very little change in weight is one of the very common outcomes for many people trying to lose weight. The content was not dramatic. The content was not created with the antagonistic intent that we'll witness later. That means something has happened in her life that has changed her mentality towards this career path. And listen, she's lousy at keeping to goals and clearly incompetent at points, without a doubt. And the cycle that people talk about is kind of still here. But she seems to believe what she says, even if it's just in the moment. And that's the difference a lot of people seem to identify with her earlier content, just looking at the comment sections. So thus far, I hope I've made the point with regards to this individual. If you feel like you need to go watch more of her channel and arrange those videos from oldest to newest, and hopefully you'll see the perspective that I'm presenting right now. With this in mind, I want to go forward and see if we can put a date on any change in her behavior. So my journey continued October 2014. And down. I weighed in at 362.0. So I'm down 4.8 pounds. February 2015. February 9th, 2015, my starting weight is 388.8. May 2015. Weighed into 405.2. It's bittersweet. I wish I was at my lowest weight still. Can't keep holding on to that. And here we have it. This is the start of Amblin's slippery slope into weight oblivion. When I look at YouTubers, I find it very interesting to see if they've just snapped or if it was a gradual disintegration of their persona, and to question what the causation of that was. As we've seen here, it's quite apparent that at the start of these videos, there was some semblance of aim or goal, and by the end, it's fallen apart, as observed by multiple commentators. This is certainly a process that has elapsed over time, however, the time where this was initiated was 2015, and this was a bad year for Amblin in general. However, what I noticed is that although she may be still rather softly spoken, a lot of her rhetoric doesn't feel as genuine anymore. For example, she's still using the 89 pound story a lot, but it now feels like a deflection rather than self-assurance. I went all the way down to 331, so I lost 89 pounds. I ate fried rice when I lost 89 pounds because that's exactly how I felt years ago when I lost the 89 pounds. I used to eat these all the time <laughs> when I was first losing a lot of weight when I was down the 89 pounds, which I actually used to eat these when I was down the famous 89 LBs. If you guys didn't know, I have lost 89 pounds in the past. I used to go to the gym all the time and I lost those famous 89 LBs. I do want you guys to know that I'm the queen of like moderation. I lost 89 pounds before. I'm a firm believer because I did lose 100 pounds. I was almost down 89 pounds, so I was almost down 100 pounds. I lost 100 pounds by eating rice and potatoes. Although it's important to keep in mind one's achievements to remind them of their capability, the repetition that Amblin creates constantly seems like a self-justification mechanism to try and hold on to something that she's clearly having trouble retaining. Do I believe the story? Well, that's something that we'll reach soon. But the problem is, believable or not, it's not relevant, and in fact promotes an unhealthy mindset that masquerades the problem in previous accomplishments. Equally, this is where you get to see a rise in that cycle that we've observed from many other commentators. Hello everybody, I just wanted to make a real quick video, another weight loss diaries if you will. I'm currently not on track. I thoroughly believe that my journey and a lot of other people's journey is about 98% mental. My mentality right now is just horrid. I do not understand what is happening to me. And listen, it's fairly normal for someone to try a diet, then give up because it's not working out for them. Amberlynn is definitely towards the extreme end of the bell curve for failed diets, but she genuinely may be that weak will to follow through. But at the same time, the sheer number of times this happens makes you start to doubt the legitimacy. There's a reason for that though, and it's not because she fails the diets, but it's always because she records and publicizes the taking on and the subsequent failure of the diets in exactly the same way. I have slip ups every night, but 
that doesn't stop me. Even though I've been tracking my calories, I'm still going over. I'll start the day amazing. Um, I'll be doing everything great. And then at night, I'm just like, possessed i want to devour everything because i did all or nothing so many times in the last couple of years that i failed every single time i tried to be a vegetarian i tried to be a vegan i tried to do 1200 calories i tried just so much crap and i was like i'm over it i want to live like a normal person but still watch what i eat and still allow myself those cheat days and those cheat meals the problem is that amberlynn doesn't seem to listen to our own advice and the shift that we're observing is one that has come from the lack of change in a way and i've always said this one of the greatest ways to generate views is conflict conflict arises constantly and people have a natural interest oh my who broke up who cheated on who but with amberlin the problem was not just the fact that these conflicts never changed but her reaction never changed to the point where you'd experience deja vu these striking similarities for example between her breakup videos were noticed by many audiences Audiences. I said to myself, I wouldn't feel right uploading that video. Um, I don't want to come on here and cry the whole video. We decided to break up. I made a video on April 3rd, two days after the breakup. I literally cried the whole video. It was 14 minutes long. <laughs> I cried the whole video. I was literally a mess. And in a way, you'd expect some similarity in the reaction. After all, it's the same person and the same life event. But as an audience member, if you are genuinely like what I hope an ideal viewer to be, a person rooting for an individual's success in their goals, yet critical where necessary, this is going to be exceptionally uncomfortable for you. Because as creators, we are expected to evolve and move forward, make it personal. The problem was that Amblin's child began to feel less and less about specific struggles and more like a soap opera where rhetoric and emotional response is valued over actual evolution and actual working towards goals and personal connection with that viewer in light of that. And everyone knows the success of manufactured content and with the repetition and similarity, people began to doubt the honesty of Amblin's content. And as I was watching, I did too. You're having this cycle of conflict that generates views. You make a video talking about how it's going to change. This in theory is meant to gain the sympathy of the viewer. It's a moment of respect. You're trying to comment about your challenges of your weight and suddenly you do a video and oh no you've relapsed and suddenly you've put on another 20 pounds and it happens again and again and again it's a downward spiral on top of this something that many people haven't spoken about is the fact that videos about gaining weight do numbers partly because there is this very seedy audience who find that content attractive. You'll see them occasionally in the comments, but a lot of the time, I'm sure they don't want to make their presence known. The amount of weight gain content on some websites is concerning. As reasonable human beings, we all have a line we draw for what we deem as a acceptable justification for a situation occurring. Weight gain can happen. It's happened to me. It'll probably happen to me again. It's difficult sometimes completely monitoring your diet. If you can do that, fair play to you, but sometimes people just can't. The thing is that Amblin's child relies on her audience having sympathy for her situation and although we can be reasonable sometimes and listen to people talk about their struggles when someone says oh I can't stop eating let me just consume some Ben and Jerry's oh woe is me we become suspicious of that person's actual drive to change their lifestyle and yes of course it's important to document your weaknesses but at the same time you have to know how to frame them and the titles were becoming more clickbait and it no longer felt like a weight loss channel but more more like a channel where the weight becomes part of the gimmick and that's okay if you want to do that but you have to understand that all these channels are a journey and if Amberlynn by some miracle lost the weight that she actually claimed she would the journey would end and she'd lose the viewers I mean people are there for the weight and if the weight is gone so is the appeal. Weight loss channels are not known for their longevity. Some large YouTubers have lost weight, but that's different. They established themselves before. You're going to have a much harder time significantly establishing yourself on the idea of losing weight alone. So by not losing it, but yet continuously committing to it, she maintains the limbo of viewer interest. The whole storyline represents a dangerous precedent. The content seems much more self-indulgent than reflective, and 
Here's the thing, it's okay to show weakness, it's okay to be human in your videos, but at the same time you can't glorify those flaws like they're fucking clickbait. And although she never explicitly stated that, she had created content that was implicitly affirming a lifestyle that was counterproductive to the notion of weight loss. And you can see that in her titles, you can see that in her clickbait, you can see that in her presentation, her attitude is changing. And it was only going to get worse for her. Which is where I introduce you to the year that ruined Amblin Reed. As said, when Amberlynn started up her channel, she had a handful of anecdotes that she would throw around here and there. One's about her family, one's about her relationships, one's about her childhood and how it shaped who she is today. And at the time, they seemed genuine. They didn't seem too dishonest in their presentation. She didn't appear to have too much of a motivation to lie about these circumstances. However, as time went on and people started probably becoming disinterested in these same stories she would continuously espouse, she decided to do two things. Firstly, she made her own stories. This was done by generating melodrama throughout her vlogs, but also she retold stories that seemed less likely and more dishonest and just involved downright lying to justify what might be considered questionable activities. For example, she claims that she's bipolar, or, or was bipolar, or probably is bipolar. It seems like she's not quite sure. Or what about that time that she was diagnosed with binge eating disorder back in 2007? Um. When it comes to scrambled eggs, I'm gonna be honest, they sometimes make me feel nauseous and it's because I have an allergy to them. How do you like your eggs? I would just scramble it. This escalated to a point where she made a video addressing the multiple lies, some of which were fairly harmless, others not so much. So if you guys remember my aunt situation, this was a while ago though. This was probably, I don't know, it was months ago. Months, to be honest. When I uploaded a video about how my aunt doesn't talk to me anymore because I'm fat. I was vulnerable and I was upset and I really felt like blaming my weight on everything was just like the easiest way to go. And if she's watching this, I am so sorry and I really just, I wish I could change who I am as a person because I really want my aunt back. Um, my weight, I wouldn't say I've lied to you guys per se about it, but I definitely haven't been like very into like telling you guys my weight. Um, I'm fluctuating a lot. Okay, so something else I've lied about is the job I had in Florida. Um, I told you guys that I was a PCA worker at a assisted living facility um, full time and I wasn't. I was a PCA worker at assisted living facility, but I was not full time. I did not want to live off of Destiny. And when I was living in Florida at the beginning, I did not make enough money on YouTube. I lied about that. I did not make enough money on YouTube to support us. Um, something else I've lied about is my blood pressure. On several occasions, I have said I don't have diabetes, I don't have high blood pressure, I don't have high cholesterol, I don't have this or that, whatever. All of that is true besides the blood pressure. I don't have high blood pressure, but I have borderline high blood pressure. The problem was that these lines were escalating further and further, and when you're a person with only so much to you, like Amblin Reed, you're going to have a limited scope in your ability to captivate the audiences. So what can you do apart from exacerbate already existent drama? And this was already hurting people, such as that relationship with her aunt. Whether those tears were real or not, you get the feeling that either way, someone's losing out on a possibly beneficial relationship, if it existed. And at the end of the day, I feel that Amblin is probably needing that more than anyone else in this situation. And first of all, I just want to say that's the sad thing about these lies. Amblin thinks she can put on a brave face, shed a few tears and use that to gain audience sympathy but all she's doing is undoing any flavour of genuineness her old content once had. With the drama that followed the year after, you not only threw any audience bond into contention but all those people who might have once said, wow that's so relatable, I feel that way too, are now questioning themselves because you've turned out to be rather disreputable in your behaviour. This is the thing, 
I wanted to show a more sympathetic side of Anne Blyn Reid so that we can now contrast that with what she has become. In her old videos, she was more restrained and arguably less emotive. And that actually worked because when you're not forcing anything, it doesn't feel like you're trying to push any emotion or deceive your audience. One thing I noticed is that Anne Blyn actually became much more disingenuous because her character became much more extroverted, much more expressive, and it felt like she was constantly trying to sell her audience a message, an agenda, and these regularly conflict it. YouTube rewards gluttony, clickbait, and train wrecks, and you can probably tell that this is what she cares about now. Given the amount of ads she puts on, it's borderline parody. And I'll save that point for the end. Because her lies escalated in the summer of 2016 in a very interesting move where she decided to try and extend or revive that deep relationship which she had done in the past by talking about her past. But she decided that she was going to lay claim to the story about an abusive partner. Now experiences that have happened in our lives can be very difficult to talk about, mainly because of the emotional trauma that we may have experienced due to it. However, if you speak about a person who may no longer be there or may not be aware that you're speaking about them or may not have the platform to defend themselves, it is also very easy for your claims to go unchallenged and therefore much of the judgment comes down to perception. I know that I can't necessarily prove many of the things that I've spoken about that happened to me in my childhood and therefore it comes down to personal credibility. And in some ways this seems like a smart idea on Anne Blyn's part because someone of her calibre at this point seems immoral enough to purposefully talk about these subjects without fear of repercussions because if you deny it, you're denying her traumatic experience. How dare you? How dare you do that? <laughs> you see, it seems like a safe move on her part, but it wasn't. Her favorite spot was my stomach. She would punch me really hard in my stomach. She'd punch me like around right here a lot. She'd punch me on my arms and she would continuously do it until I agreed to make love to her or have sex, whatever you want to consider it. No, in fact, her ex-partner Casey, who was identifying as a female during the original relationship, as Cassidy released a video documenting his experiences with Amblin, refuting her claims and arguing that he was the victim of the abuse. I've gotten hit before. I went to school with bruises up and down my arms. Bruises. My friends asked me, what's wrong? What, what, what happened to you? Eventually they figured it out. So every time I would come to school, upset, in tears, bruised down my arms, hands, Cuts, scars, amber again. Much of this comes down to one word against another, so in many ways Amblin had many opportunities to respond to his claims. Maybe she'd argue, maybe she'd bring some evidence forward, but no, she just removed her original video and kept quiet. However, there is a re-upload which can quite clearly show how manipulative she is if our judgement of these events is correct. She hooks the audience in with that anecdote of her parents and how intimate this was to her and then leads into this elaborate story about her experience. The one thing that she did do was this very strange poetry reading, which I suppose was meant to be some kind of cryptic response, but that's the best she can do. She's trying to be in a position of vagueness so that the person can't respond. Rain and petals eavesdrop, I used the wrong word. Rain and petals eavesdrop, I used the wrong word. Rain and petals eavesdrop, I used the wrong word. My mental hygiene has been rotten and stirred. Not quite Tennyson, is it? And that's another thing I wanted to note. Amberlynn seems to use these tropes like poetry and literature that are typically seen as channeling one's feelings into a higher emotive plane to circumvent criticism and try and add depth to a character. Using art to convey false feelings is extremely manipulative because we typically look to the implicit messages of art to indirectly convey the character of a person that they may not express directly. It's like an outlet, so that we may look back and one day say, oh, what a trouble mind. But Anne Boleyn takes advantage of that and she tries to convey sentiments that aren't really true. And now she's trying to portray experiences that aren't really true. Fortunately, people saw through it. And this is the thing. If this was true, this is the most vulnerable and open you can get. And let me explain why that's important. If I'm late to some appointments, some people might not trust me when I commit to arriving at a certain time, but they might still trust me if I decide to talk about more personal matters because they will assume that you have a degree of respect for the sensitivity of those subjects and will not take advantage of them for personal gain. This is exactly what Amberlynn has done and thus she has sacrificed all 
of her credibility. You cannot trust her when she tries to open up about more personal content in the future and it brings into question everything she's ever spoken about. What if this content that once bonded people was just a fraud all along? I don't know if it was all a fraud because I don't know if she had the same goal at the start of her channel, but I'm sure that's what it's descended to now. And it's genuinely sad the few people that she may have given hope to at one point have probably seen that desolated by a fame-driven appeal to a populace who are watching a train wreck. 2016 was also the year that introduced her to Mukbang. By now, she'd already started doing food reviews, which clearly wasn't a good decision, but Mukbang was really the straw that broke the camel's back. And I think that's what annoyed a lot of people. The simple fact is that no one who is actively trying to lose weight can simultaneously create a brand of eating large amounts of food in one sitting unless it's sesame seeds. The only way you could do that is if you were exercising an equal amount of time to burn off the calories, which Amberlynn was clearly not doing. But it gave her some of the best views in her career, so who cared? And it made her put on weight and then she could bring attention to her weight, which also generated views. And you create this cycle that runs again and again and again. But this channel shouldn't be about views. It's about Amblin. And there are so many problems to observe here. I can't speak for everyone here, but I've often found my behaviour a somewhat conscious response to the environment around me. When I've found myself in situations where my reputation might be viewed badly by those in my circle, I have an option to work hard to realign that view of me, or I could fall into fulfilling what they view of me and not bother what they think. I've often worked hard to take the former option because, firstly because I'm a paranoid person who does enjoy being on good terms with those around me, and secondly because I think it's a better thing to do, it's a more positive impact. Being self-conscious isn't a blessing in some ways. It causes a lot of stress in social situations, but at the same time, being self-aware is important because you not just look after yourself, but you look after the message that you might be portraying to your audience. Actions like these have greater consequences. I feel that in this situation, Amblin has eventually found herself in so much drama and found it so profitable that she has completely disregarded honor. That has made her more audacious, outgoing, and perhaps even confident, but it also makes her more fake, more toxic, and more destructive. When she half-heartedly tries to create a bond with any viewers that might actually be there for her personality, which I'm highly doubtful of, she's found it much easier to fall into the worst perception that people have of her rather than actively challenging it. As her personality has changed, so has has her lifestyle and she put on more and more weight while supposedly lamenting it. In my opinion, although they don't receive much airtime in developing their character, she has surrounded herself with people who don't challenge that mentality and may actually affirm it. Girl, you are 60 pounds away from 600 pounds. Go for a walk. I'm in true. <laughs> what? I'm in true. I'm in Some of these are accurate. Like, I don't know. Studies show that you're much more likely to conform to those around you in person than if they're impersonal, like over the web or over the phone. In the original video, she's clearly much more conscious about what people think, but now she's clearly comfortable in her real life situation and that's all she sees herself as having to answer to now. There's a load of pointing fingers about who's caused who to gain weight and so on. And I don't know who is doing what specifically. I don't know what goes on behind the scenes exactly other than it involves food. What I do know is that it's happening and regardless of the excuses that Amblin tries to spew, she has put on a significant amount of weight, weight that when we look at her old content, she didn't put on and she didn't put it on for a while. This was content that regardless of whether you believe it was legitimate or not, showed that Amblin doesn't have the world's slowest metabolism and can't do anything at all to prevent her weight gain. In the last couple years, the amount of hate she has been receiving has steadily increased, probably due to people calling out that cycle. And yet, I think by going through that cycle, she has just found herself falling further and further into it. And she has responded to this by doing these reading hate comments. This successfully alienates herself from the audience and the genuine criticism that she might be receiving. Whether people's tone is right or not does not discount the genuine problems here. She attributes the criticism to the fact that she is fat. That was fun. It's definitely a lot of hate. A lot of hate. But I deserve it, right? 
I'm fat, so I deserve the hate. And not the fact that she has continuously failed to sort herself out, despite the fact that she's acknowledged this many times before, so much that people don't believe that she is taking her own criticism seriously. But Weight Watchers, for someone like me, I don't know. I'm gonna be eating lots of vegetables and everything is just gonna be completely fresh and homemade. Big bag of Cheeto Puffs. I am getting this Dove chocolate and I'm getting a ramen noodle. So I'm eating this tonight, this tonight, and this. There are so many videos documenting these constant contradictions. That one can be found on the Binge Monsters channel. I'll leave it in the pinned comments. And I think how the thought of just firstly her lack of care in these actions and then the thought that she recorded edited and uploaded it with the thought that this is a good message to be sending. It doesn't feel real. It feels like she's taking advantage. And then the next day she'll express regret, which would just seem as insincere. Her attitude just screams to me someone who doesn't care anymore. Whatever there was in the past just isn't there. And I think that's the most dishonest factor that comes into this, is the fact that she still wants to care. And now all she does is cater to people who want to watch the disaster unfold and count up those pounds. 400 pounds, 500 pounds, approaching 600 pounds which would be around 270 kilograms. I think Amblin came onto YouTube for the weight loss. I mean, in her old video, she said she wanted to do this because she wanted an audience to hold her accountable. But the problem is that when that audience decided to hold her to account, regardless of whether they may have been hostile or not, she clearly didn't handle it well, and YouTube became about a different goal. She realized that she could foster that hostility and garner more views. She shifted the responsibility of her diet onto the audience response and since has continued to gain weight at a rate that has not been noted before on her channel. Continuously committing to change but failing and now whenever she has those solemn speeches where she promises to do better, it feels like a political ruse rather than actually any genuine commitment. Even if in the early days her commitments were futile, it felt like she believed them at the time. Does she really believe them now? I hope she does, but if she does change, it will not be with the mindset that she currently has, which is a self-destructive one. If she really does care about getting her weight down, then she has to change. If she doesn't want to lose weight, well, there's nothing I can say to her with regards to that on principle. I mean, it's not what I'd recommend and you're putting an awful lot of stress onto an already struggling healthcare system. But at the same time, you need to stop promoting this arc, this cycle to possibly vulnerable people that your mentality is justifiable to someone who you might want to lose weight, even though you apparently want to lose weight. To a majority of the audience, it might seem obvious that this is not the way that someone should live, but there will always be people who are questioning their own responsibility. And although it's definitely possible that some people are weaker than others, because your situation is not like any other, Amberlynn, you have an audience that is now watching a person and counting up their weight until something terrible happens. And you're placing eight mid roll ads, and you're probably making a decent amount of money from that. Other people don't have that. So don't try and frame your mentality from a moral standpoint because most other people who might be in a similar weight position don't have all these motivations that have become so obvious in your recent content. They do not have that safety net. I mean, come on, look at those mid rolls. And the list of stuff she does goes on and on and on. And it's not worth documenting them all right now because at the end of the day, they can be explained by the mentality we've discussed. More lying, animal maltreatment, some kind of pyramid scheme. She apparently created a fake account to defend herself from criticism in a Facebook and apparently Discord group too. It's genuinely frustrating because whether she was genuine in her first videos or not, it's clear they meant something to people. And now it's just come to here. And I wish it hadn't. Do you know how many puns I can make now? But you see, I'm a man of refrain because I accept that life is not easy and when we deal with serious problems in our lives, we might let go of some of the things that we are meant to take care of. But at the same time, it's important that we acknowledge the consequences our actions might have. And I think that's what bothers people. You're a public figure. There is this mentality that people are gonna hate on you just because you're fat. And sure, a few people are like that. But at the same time, being overweight does promote an insecurity in many people and I think you understand that insecurity too. Your old videos definitely seem that way. Other YouTube related factors that you might be experiencing may override that now, but that's not the case for anyone else that you're sending these messages to. You are the exception, not the rule. In our first ever video, Amblin says she's doing this for herself. I'm not really doing this for other people, I'm more so doing it for myself. It's clear what that means to her now. 
This is the problem. Amberlynn cannot stop the cycle of failure and food and consumption, or else she will lose her subscribers, regardless of their motivation to stay. And she'll continue to push herself further and further until something terrible happens and she loses that audience that she gained in the first place. And all she'll be left with is a lot of weight and the security is gone. And all that drama, all that deception that you took part in that hurt people, the clearly affected people, would be for nothing. You're on thin ice as it is. People don't stick around for the credibility because they know you have none of that. You've destroyed that for the sake of clickbait and views and talking about people who you thought couldn't defend themselves. Many people will just see how far you can push yourself. And I sure as hell hope you turn around, for everyone's sake. Because I don't see many positive outcomes from this situation as it is. To the audience, having idols for weight loss is important. It's sometimes hard and I really do deeply empathize with that struggle. But Amberlynn Reed is not an idol and the fact that she might be quote trying is not really a defense against the very serious criticism she is facing down because it's clear there is a level of consciousness to what she's doing. I just want people to get better. So yeah, there's the video. Passionate, passionate, passionate. I hope the passion came across. I would love to give a big shout out to the editors. They have done a fantastic job. Stellar, stellar job, my friends. Make sure you follow them, check out their videos. Some of them are very talented people who are definitely going places. And one day they'll look back and they'll say, I edited for that idiot once. Also, big shout out to my Patreons. They are up on the screen now. And special shout out to my $50 Patreons, Connor, great chap, and some hullabaloo whose name should be correctly spelt this time. I apologize sincerely for my terrible error first time round. Also, one more $50 Patreon evening steal who has only recently signed up. Thank you very much. All you $50 Patreons are beautiful people. Much love. And also to my $100 Patreons, Ryan and Brandon, who have blessed me with their generosity. Um, if you want to hit me up, Twitter, at the right opinion, Facebook, Discord, all links in the pinned comment. Just click the see more. Um, it'll be quite a long comment because I'll have my references in there too. I don't think I have too much else to talk about. Um, love to your comments on the situation. Leave them there. Otherwise, I'm the right opinion and I will see you in the next one.